Today on BRS TV, we're going to discuss submersible pumps versus external pumps. For me, it just comes down to a few things, price, ease of installation, and a couple of heat issues. Submersible pumps like this mag drive here tend to be less expensive and a complete breeze to install. All you need to do is slap on a insert fitting onto the top, push some tube on, and you've installed your pump. A lot of people are gonna find this pretty attractive. One of the issues with using a submersible pump, however, is the entire thing does actually go into the tank. That means that every little bit of heat that the pump produces is going to be dispersed into the tank. This compiled with some of the other equipment in the tank could be the difference between having to have a chiller or just being able to cool your tank with fans. I personally try to avoid using chillers whenever possible because they're expensive to purchase as well as operate. And frankly, they're just one more piece of equipment that can fail on my system. So how is an external pump any different? Well, there's three major differences. The first one is, obviously the pump motor isn't inside the tank. So a vast majority of the heat that's produced by the motor will disperse into the air rather than into your tank. The motor casing on external pumps like this Japanese Iwaki are typically made out of aluminum, which conducts and disperses heat much better than plastic. They also have a fan on the back to disperse the heat. The result is a very cool running pump. In fact, it's just barely warm to the touch while in operation. Lastly, on a good external pump, we're going to have a very robust head. This one's actually bolted on. This is pretty important because the pump is going to be run externally and we don't want to have any cracks or leaks. So it's pretty easy to say that one brand or type of pump is going to add more heat to the tank than another. However, I wanted to demonstrate how big an impact this really can be. So we took two 1200 gallon per hour pumps and we added them to separate five gallon buckets full of 79 degree water for three hours. In that three hours, the Iwaki raised the temperature about seven degrees, whereas the submersible mag drive hit 16 degrees at 95 degrees and rising. As you can see, there's a pretty substantial difference. So some of you are probably saying to yourself, well, the mag drive is an external pump as well, isn't it? Well, kind of. People certainly use them as external pumps all the time, and it does say on the package that it can be used that way. However, what I'd like to call it is a submersible pump that can be used as an external pump if need be. The reason I say that is because I believe it's missing the three things that make a really good external pump. The outer shell on the motor is made out of plastic rather than aluminum. It's relying on passive cooling rather than a fan. And the head of the pump and seals aren't exactly what I would call robust. In fact, I was going to set this one up externally and run the same heat test. However, when I was screwing the fitting in, I screwed it in too far and I cracked the pump head all the way down the side. This would be virtually impossible with most quality external only pumps. So which one should you choose? Well, there isn't really a right or wrong answer here because both of them have been implemented successfully many, many thousands of times. What you need to do is take these things and apply them to your own tank, like the cost, ease of install, space constraints, and most importantly, how does it fit in with your heat management plan for all of your equipment. 